Hey friends, it's Kim from Dodges and Deasy. Today we are going to be talking about my reading journal. This is the first year that I started a bullet journal for a reading journal. In today's video, I'd like to go over why I started a reading journal. I'd like to share my setup process and I'd also like to share a few spreads of books that I have completed with you guys. So for those of you who watched my 2023 journal video, you know that I deal with certain health issues. Um, there's a lot of chronic health issues in my life. It's not just one thing, it's actually a number of things. Some things I've been dealing with for years, some things are newer. But I started noticing that the illnesses were impacting me mentally as well. And I started noticing things like brain fog, confusion, not retaining things the same way I used to, memory loss, and I did a little research and realized that for certain conditions that I have, doing brain exercises, working out my brain mentally like you would work out your body physically, was actually really important for me to do to keep my cognitive function where I needed it to be. When I was a child, I loved reading. I was the kind of kid that going to the bookstore was like better than going to the candy store. and. I just read a book a day or a book every two days. I was absolutely in love with and addicted to reading. But I noticed as an adult that that same magic, that same spark just wasn't there. I would start books a lot of times and never finish them. And it was just really a struggle with my attention span. I decided to create a bullet journal because I feel like bullet journals are such a great way for creating habits that will stick, that will last. And what I was hoping to do was not only rekindle my love of reading and start to actually complete the books that I had started, but also give myself that motivation every day to do something that would help me mentally and cognitively. The bullet journal that I chose to use for my reading journal is from Notebook Therapy. I chose a B5. It is the largest journal that they offer. And to me, the B5 was the right choice for a reading journal because I feel like in a reading journal, you want a lot of space, not just to decorate, but also to write. I know a lot of people rate books or critique books. Me personally, I'm just doing kind of a very simple rating critique, but mostly just my thoughts on it. It's a little bit more laid back, but there is a lot of writing that goes into these. And I just felt like the B5 really fit with a layout that had enough room for a lot of ideas, a lot of reflection, a lot of writing, a lot of book review. The first part of this video, I'd like to spend time showing you how I set up my reading journal. 
but also telling you what influenced me as I did. So there were three people that really influenced how I went about making this journal. The first was a therapist that I listened to on YouTube. I did mention her in my 2023 journal video. She was talking about how cultivating habits are easier if you choose things that are what she called low hanging fruit. And I know that sounds kind of funny and silly and yeah. Um, but what she meant was when you're starting a habit, don't go for like the apple on top of the tree that's hard to reach, hard to get to, hard to accomplish. You're probably not going to do very well if the habits that you start off with are habits that are really difficult for you to accomplish. Instead, choose habits that are easy to accomplish so you can start checking off your boxes, you can start making them into a habit every day. The more you actually accomplish your goals, the better you'll feel about yourself, the more confidence you'll have to accomplish them in the future. So to me, I wanted to start off with books that were easy. The books that I started off with were the Shady Hollow Murder Mystery series. These are books that are adult murder mysteries. There is definitely certain adult themes in them. Um, they do involve murder, but they have a very whimsical, childlike, easy feel to them. They're not difficult reads. They're not deep thinkers. These books, the main characters are animals that, you know, they do dress in clothing and they do have jobs and they work in shops and they have little you know outfits and stores and they drink coffee it's all really really cute and cozy but they're woodland animals and there's a sense that even though these are adult books there's just a kind of childlike wonder that goes along with them i struggled for years and i mean years because of my chronic illness to be able to actually finish books so I would start a book and stop it, start another book, stop it. And just completing a book because of the attention issues that I was dealing with, the cognitive issues that I was dealing with, even sometimes physical issues like not having enough energy to hold a book or you know, keeping my eyes open for a long time some days is even hard. I needed something that was really going to keep my attention, would be an easy read, and these really did it for me. These were kind of my low-hanging fruit, as that therapist said. Once I finished this book, and then finished this book, and then finished this book, it was really, really easy to go on to bigger books. And soon I found myself completing books like Pride and Prejudice, Anne of Green Gables, The Great Gatsby, all of these classics that I had been wanting to read for a while, and I just couldn't do. So this is my reading journal cover page. I just did a start date. I know a lot of people, um, I watch a lot of bookstagrammers and people with uh, reading journal YouTube accounts. I know a lot of them, their reading journals are just for one year. They usually have a goal of amount of books that they read every month. They usually have a goal of amount of books that they read every year. For me, just finishing a book is a really big accomplishment. And I didn't want to put any pressure on myself with that. So I just wrote the date, not that I started reading, but the date that I started this journal. And I left the date for the finished journal open. I did not want to put any kind of pressure on myself with how many books I would read a month or how many books I would read a year. The only thing that I wanted to do was put a goal of reading every day. And I did have a measurable goal my goal was to read either one chapter or a half an hour each and every day. But to me, that was it. That was all I was going to require of myself. I didn't want this to feel like pressure and then I would fail. I didn't want to feel like this was work. I wanted to feel like it was light and easy and inviting and fun. So not only did I leave this journal really kind of loose and open-ended, but all of the decorations that I used were very like, Huga, cozy, inviting decorations that just made me kind of want to light a candle, cuddle up with a good book, and I wanted this journal to kind of invite me in just like the coziness of reading invites you in. The next section are books read. So these are not books I'm currently reading. These are not books that I've started because if I did a spread with books I've started, 
there would be 50 pages here. These are just books read. So there's a definite sense of accomplishment and happiness and joy when I finish a book and I can print out the book and paste the cover into one of these pages. Now I left quite a lot of pages open for these because the journal is pretty large and I wanted to give myself enough space for all of the covers. So there's quite a lot of pages in the beginning for just the book covers of the books that I complete. These printable figure stickers are from Teddy Ann of Hippie Post. I absolutely love them and I felt like they were just really cute to have in a book journal. They're her book club stickers, I believe she calls them. There are a few more books that I've finished since making this page um, that I definitely have to fill in, but because I'm printing them as kind of a sheet, what I normally do is wait until I finish a few books at a time so I'm not wasting ink or paper. So this isn't actually up to date, but as soon as I finish a couple more, it will be more up to date. I did leave two spreads for favorite books. These are just going to be pages that are at a quick glance are going to just remind me of books that were very, very special to me and just were favorites out of the whole journal. I like in bullet journals when there are a couple of pages where you don't have to flip through the whole book to get some easy information. I just thought having a favorite book section just to kind of remind me of which ones I loved the most would be helpful. Obviously, I still have to fill this in. I've read quite a few books since starting this and the Great Gatsby definitely was my favorite out of everything that I read, but there's quite a few more that I would definitely consider favorite books to fill in. As I said before, I do watch quite a bit of book journaling videos. I personally find them so enjoyable. I love to see people's creative spreads. I love to hear their takes on books. But the problem with this is there's a little bit of a disconnect with me. I know that there are people that do these channels that are really, really serious readers. They tend to read four or five books a month. Their recommendations or books that they would like to read lists usually get all read and there's tons of books on them. They're really, really diligent readers. I want to get to that point, but I know I'm not at that point now. And the point of this is to be gentle, and inviting and not to put pressure on myself. So I did include a books I want to read spread, but really it's just to remind myself of books that I would like to read. So, you know, there are some like Mirror Lake and Evergreen Chase that I have already read. There are some like Where the Crawdads Sing and Spare that I haven't read yet. If I don't read the books on this list, I'm not going to consider it not reaching a goal. As I said, this is a really gentle journal. This is just to remind me if I really, really am interested in a book to pick it up. It serves more as a reminder than a goal. My reading tracker, again, I'm sorry that this is not up to date at the time I'm filming this. Um, when I film my YouTube videos, it's because I'm having a stronger energy day. I deal with really severe chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, looking like possibly an autoimmune disease too. So I deal with really, really severe, severe fatigue and pain every day of my life. So when I feel like I have a day that's a little bit better, I have a little bit more energy, I can sit up, I can do some things. That's when I film my YouTube videos, unfortunately. They're not always super up to date because I have very limited time that I can craft. So you can see that March is mostly filled out. This isn't really that much behind, but still, um, I chose not to include January and February. In this journal, um, I did include it in my daily planner, my reading tracker, but because this specific journal was started in March, I just chose to go from March and go through January. Days filled in completely are days that I've read a book. Days that are filled in with stripes are days I listen to an audiobook. I personally struggled with audiobooks feeling like they were as good as reading or like I was cheating or something. But then I realized so many people that are big readers do both. They read books and they listen to audiobooks. And the more I started listening to audiobooks, the more I started really understanding that you could still use your imagination and they were still great ways to read, especially on days where I'm struggling to keep my eyes open or my fatigue is really high. 
audiobooks have been lifesavers for me. I still feel like I'm using my imagination, I still feel like I'm reading, but it's also a gentle way for someone like me that deals with such severe chronic illness and chronic fatigue and chronic pain can keep up with their reading schedule. So I would just like to encourage anyone who is like me out there that maybe has some kind of obstacles that they have have to overcome when it comes to reading don't be judgmental with yourself if audiobooks work better for you do audiobooks i've read a couple of audiobooks now and one i didn't love but the other two i really did and it they've really just been pleasures it's been a great way to get some reading in I do have one spread set apart for recommendations. As I said before, I know people with really serious bookstagram accounts take a ton of recommendations. They read series, they read tons of books from people. This is simply to serve as a reminder for myself. I'm not going to go crazy with recommendations. If somebody recommends something to me and I feel like it fits my personality or where I am kind of with what I'm interested in reading, I'll write it down again just as a reminder. If I don't get to all of my recommendations, I'm not going to feel like it is a unmet goal. This is just a very, very gentle reminder page. In the back of my journal, I have a section for quotes. Now quotes are super important to me. I love quotes. I have so many finished journals that are nothing but quote journals. I find so much inspiration from quotes. I just love them. I don't know if anyone is like me, but quotes are just my jam. I love them. So I do have sections in the back of the notebook that are just for quotes. And as I finish a book, I go through some of my favorite quotes from that book and I just write it in the section here. I did leave quite a few pages because like I said, quotes were important to me. I find a lot of inspiration from them. So I left quite a few pages for them in the back. And as you can see, quite a few pages are finished already. I also have quote pages for specific books. I am currently reading The Cottage Fairy Companion by Paola Merrill. She is the second person that I felt a lot of inspiration from. I said that there were three. One was the therapist that I listened to. Paola is the second. She is somebody that loves to read. She even worked in a bookstore for a while. She's a really, really great reader. But she is somebody that also really enjoys children's stories, young adult stories. She's really into mythical things, magical things, and she allows herself not to be judgmental with her reading choices. She's actually the person that I found the uh, Shady Hollow books from. She had recommended them and was talking about them, and I noticed a lot of people started reading them, but I first heard about them from her. And I just loved her gentle approach to reading. She didn't apologize that she loved stories with fairies or magic or loved enjoying rereading stories that were important to her as a child. And to me, that just gave me freedom to say, okay, I don't have to start with really long books or classic books or deep thinkers. If something is enjoyable to me, even if it is a children's book, I'm going to allow myself to enjoy reading because it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be a hobby. So she is the second person that really just inspired me. And she actually just came out with a book called The Cottage Fairy Companion. Um, I'm guessing a lot of you do know who she is. The Cottage Fairy is my absolute favorite channel on YouTube. Her aesthetic is so cozy, it's so huga. it's just wonderful. She does crafts and baking and takes nature walks and dries flowers and honestly if like I could choose anybody's life in the world it would be hers. I want to live her life so badly. So I grabbed this book when she came out with it and I thought it would be like it is full of kind of different kinds of crafts and recipes, things that you can either implement into your own life or try out or, you know, other little stories to think about. It's a really easy read. It's something that you can kind of just read a little bit each day, almost like a meditative practice. 
But what I wasn't prepared for was just how deep some of her thoughts were and profound some of the things that she was saying and how just honestly life-changing some of the lessons in this book were. I actually have a quote section just from the Cottage Fairy Companion book where I've just been writing down things that are just like, wow, that's so life-changing, or I really wanna remember that, or that really resonates with me, or that's something that I wanna work on. So Paola definitely has her own section of Cottage Fairy quotes. And I left a few pages here because the book is fairly large. It does have sections for each season. So I did finish spring. I'm on to summer right now. And I just wanted to give this one a special spot. Now I'll tell you about the last person that influenced me. And also I will go into some of my spreads. So the last person that had a really big influence on this journal was Hedda from Mochi Buju. I absolutely love her channel. She is one of my favorite crafting channels on YouTube, and I really, really loved her very individualistic, non-pressure way of doing a reading journal. Hedda is one of those people that does read three and four books a month. She's a great reader, but her reading journal, it's not critical. It's not like rating books. It's more just kind of what she thinks about them, her personal experience, her personal thoughts. It's very personalized to her and she doesn't try to be anybody else. Her reading journal fits what she wants a reading journal to be. And so I took a lot of inspiration from her as well when I made my own. Personally, I do like to have the author publisher year and if it's a part of a series, each journal that you are making is yours, so you make it however you want to make it. I did include my rating for plot, character, setting, and my overall experience. Just like in my coffee shop journal, the total or the overall is not like a mathematical formula. These numbers might not look anything like this number, it's just kind of my own personal experience and a reminder to myself of how the book made me feel. Like Hedda, this section is less of a critique of the book and more how I felt about the book, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy. There definitely can be certain things that are a little critique-y, but it's more just my memories of it, my experience with it, what I loved, what I didn't love. It's not so critical, but it's more personal. And I have just adored making these spreads. So I don't know who else is like me, but I'm like one of those super plan-y people that like marking something off a checklist or, you know, coloring in a box is so motivating for me. I will read just to color in that box. And I know there's certain people out there who are like me. This reading tracker has really kept me on track, but also doing these spreads has really kept me on track. I have had so much fun doing these spreads. And to be honest with you guys, out of all the journals that I've used this year, I have had the most fun in my reading journal. These spreads have been so much fun to make, so enjoyable. Working in the B5 has been so easy. It's just come together so just effortlessly for me that, um, yeah, not only is <laughs> marking off my daily goal really satisfying, but making these spreads has been so much fun that it has definitely been just a boost every time I've made one that I can't wait to finish my next book. To conclude this, first video of my reading journal because there will definitely be more. I'd like to just go over a couple of books that I've read and a couple of spreads that I've made. The next reading journal video will include more books that I've read and more spreads, but not how I set things up. So today I'd like to share about the Shady Hollow Mysteries. As I said before, these are super, super cozy books. They're called Cozy Mysteries and they really are. The animals are the main characters. They wear, as you can see, little outfits and they drink coffee and they live in a town where the community is just really tight and everyone knows everyone. There's a bookshop, there's a coffee shop. It is just so adorably cute. Shady Hollow, I felt like, was a great start to the series because not only was the little world really inviting and I was able to escape, which healthy escapism guys especially if you're dealing with anxiety depression chronic illness going through a tough time 
there's healthy escapism and it was so nice to just be kind of swallowed up into this little cozy town and all of its inhabitants. Um, it was something that helped me just emotionally so much. And also I felt like Shady Hollow had a great mystery as well. I definitely felt like I figured things out but then was second guessing myself throughout the book and I really enjoyed that. The second book in the Shady Hollow mystery series is called Cold Clay. Cold Clay was a bit of a mixed experience for me. I absolutely loved being back in Shady Hollow. I loved seeing all of my favorite characters again. Cold Clay was set in autumn, which is my favorite season. There was a ton of Huga things going on. You guys know that I love my coziness. There were lots of talk of the fall leaves, the fall colors, hot cups of coffee, the animals wearing like little hats and coats. So being back in Shady Hollow for me alone was worth this book. I would read every single Shady Hollow book, no matter if the mystery was like a great one or not, just because I truly enjoy the characters and I truly enjoy the setting. Out of all of the Shady Hollow books, Cold Clay fell the most short for me, just because I felt like I had figured out the mystery and kind of the entire plot right from the get-go. So I really was reading the whole book kind of knowing who did it and kind of knowing almost exactly how the book would play out. That wasn't the most fun, but like I said, it was still worth it just because of how adorable these books are. I took a break from Shady Hollow and I read The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. Now this is a book that I have read before. I have read multiple times before. Michelle from Tape and Twine actually sent this book to me and it was a book that I had really wanted. I had read excerpts and quotes from it, thought it sounded wonderful. She surprised me with it one day in the mail and when I read the whole thing, I was just like overcome with emotion. Anyone that's read this book, I, I mean, I cry almost every single time I read it and I've read it multiple times now. This is a book that can be as simple for a child to understand and love, but as profound, someone who is 80 years old could still get wisdom out of this book. It is truly a book for all ages, and it is just one of the most special books like I've ever read. I just adore this book. When my dad visited during a time where, you know, I had already gotten pretty sick and I really wasn't out of bed a lot, and he just kind of came and spent time with me, just in a really like gentle visit. There was no expectations on going out or doing anything. He just kind of spent time with me and held space with me in my illness. And it's just one of the most special memories that I have. I actually shared this book with him and we read it together. And I'll always just cherish that memory so much. So this is a really, really special book to me. And again, this is that easy to read, easy to finish, check off, you're doing it, you're meeting your goals column of book that it wasn't a hard read, you can definitely read it in a day, but it made me feel like, okay, I got another book accomplished, I'm doing really well. There were so many quotes that just influenced me and just made me think. It really normalizes asking for help, it normalizes things like love and kindness and community over, you know, other kinds of values. It's just such a profound book that I took two spreads to fully just write out my opinion on this book, how it made me feel, certain quotes. The last book in the Shady Hollow mystery series is called Mirror Lake. This is the last full novel out now. There is another one coming in the fall and there's also a novella that takes place during the holidays. Mirror Lake I absolutely loved. Not only were the characters more developed, the town was more developed, but I also felt like the good mystery was back. So just like in the first Shady Hollow, I felt like the mystery did keep me guessing. I felt like I had figured it out and I was a little worried that it was going to be similar to Cold Clay where I was like, oh, am I gonna read this whole book again, kind of knowing what happens? But there's definitely a plot twist midway that makes you kind of question everything. You're thinking, did I get this right? Didn't I get this right? And the plot twist was really what did it for me because even though I felt like I had figured it out, I questioned everything I thought I had figured out. So this book definitely kept me interested until the end. I think it might be my favorite out of all four of the Shady Hollow books that I've read, so I really, really loved Mirror Lake. I felt like the authors were definitely fully in the swing of who the characters were 
and I just loved everything about it. The Great Gatsby, oh my goodness. I just want to point out that I am using a lot of Hippie Post printables and also my own printables in this book. I'm also using a lot of things from Notebook Therapy. So a lot of the washi tape and stickers that are in these spreads is from Notebook Therapy, which is where the notebook is from. But a lot of the printables, like the animal printables, these flapper printables are from Teddy Ann of Hippie Post. I'll definitely leave her info and Notebook Therapy's info in the description. But I also have some of my own printables, like this Daisy Buchanan sticker. The Great Gatsby is a book that I feel like I read a long time ago and loved and completed, but I've been wanting to reread it and it was one of those books that I just kept picking up and putting down, picking up and putting down. If anybody is familiar with F. Scott Fitzgerald, each and every sentence is like a meaty cheeseburger. <laughs> it's not an easy read because I feel like each sentence is like poetry. There's just so much meaning in every word that he writes and every sentence that he writes. It's almost like you can just think of one sentence that he said for an hour and just be completely captivated with that thought. But the entire book is that way. So as much as I absolutely adored his writing, and I do, um, I think Their Great Gatsby, if I'm being honest, is my favorite book I've ever read, hands down. I've had books that I've read previously that have been favorites and books that I've read since that have been favorites, but if I'm being honest, I don't know if I love a book more than I love this one. I love that Long Island, my home, <laughs> is a character in its own right in The Great Gatsby. There's definitely a Long Island feel to this book. I love the 1920s, especially Long Island in the 1920s. There's just kind of like this glitz and glamour. His writing is just so deep and so beautiful. It's like poetry. It makes you think things. It makes you feel things. It makes you recall things. And yeah, the book has aspects that are very sad about it. There's definitely a humanity about the book that shows the good and the bad in people. But he just does it in such an artful way that I just appreciate the melancholy of it, I appreciate the honesty of it, and I appreciate the escapism of it. I just absolutely love this book. And I was so, so, so happy that the first classic that I did read once I began this reading journey was The Great Gatsby because it was such an enjoyable experience. Pride and Prejudice was the next classic that I tackled. Again, these Pride and Prejudice beautiful, beautiful printable stickers are from Hippie Post. Now, don't kill me because I'm going to have good and bad to say about this book. Pride and Prejudice is my favorite love story of all time, probably my favorite story of all time. And I was just over the moon to finally complete this book because this is a story that I have watched the Kira Knightley version of like probably five million times. I don't even know how many times I've watched it. I've also watched like the BBC miniseries that's like eight hours long and really close to the book and includes a lot of like the original dialogue and I've watched that so many times. I was like a Pride and Prejudice super fan. But again, this was a book that I kept picking up and putting down and not fully getting through and not finishing. When I finally finished it, I had mixed feelings about it. And it was one of only two books in my life where I actually preferred the movie or the miniseries version more than the book itself. And I know, please don't freak out, all of you Pride and Prejudice lovers. I still am a Pride and Prejudice lover. It just shook me because this has been my favorite story of all time for years and years and years, that I actually preferred the media version more than the book. And I think there's two reasons for that. One is I did feel like the book was very long and very slow to start. I felt like it didn't really start getting interesting until around chapter 30, and that was quite far into the book. A lot of times I'm always interested when I watch a movie, what's in the book that I'm missing? And I'm always really curious to know the whole story. In this case, I actually feel like what the miniseries and the movies cut out is kind of slow moving 
and not that important. So when I did read the entire story, I kind of came away feeling like, you know what, the movies really do kind of capture the essence of the book, and a lot of it was a little slow going for me. Another thing that I think affected this, I listened to the audio version of this book, and I think that made a huge difference because I listened to an audio version that I did not like. And I think that really, really makes a difference because this is one of three audiobooks that I have listened to so far. Um, I'm completely new to audiobooks, I've only listened to three. Two of them, I felt like the narrator did a perfect job. I was completely captivated by how they read it, the voices they used, how they express certain things. The Pride and Prejudice version that I read was from Apple Books, or listened to rather, was from Apple Books, and I just felt like she did a terrible job. I felt like it was so bad. I was so distracted by the voices that she was making, thinking that they were not voices that I would put with certain people. When she read certain dialogue, I just thought if I was reading this myself, I would have read that a completely different way. And I think it distracted me. So this is one book that I have to say, I didn't love as much as I was expecting to, but I also fully plan on going back and reading it myself, not doing an audiobook the next time around and seeing if I like it more, because I have a feeling that that will happen. I have a feeling that the audiobook just kind of ruined it. This was another one that I just had so many thoughts on that wound up being a two-page spread, so this is the second half of it. There were certain things that I loved about the book that weren't really, I felt like, as stressed in the movies. One was that I feel like there was kind of a realization on Elizabeth's part that her relationship with her parents was not the healthiest. And I really appreciated kind of like the epilogue in the story that is in the book that is really never shown in the movies. And that was where there kind of becomes a bit of a separation, a healthy separation with her and her family. She doesn't cut them out, but she also kind of separates herself a little bit from them. And I also appreciated that there's kind of this repentant Darcy in the end of the book that you don't really get a full view of in the movies where he actually does go into explaining he was raised in a very prejudiced mindset and that there actually was prejudice in his heart. It wasn't just that Elizabeth softened him, but he really realized that his parents had kind of done him a disservice by raising him to think that he was better than other people. And I feel like there's kind of this really, really strong character arc and kind of moment of repentance that Darcy goes through that I don't really know was fully expressed in any of the media adaptations that I've seen. So there were definitely things that I loved about the book. I loved how more in depth things got. Um, but yeah, I have to revisit this one. I still gave it a four out of five stars. I mean, how could you not love Elizabeth and Darcy no matter what? But I do feel like it was slower moving than I thought it would be. It was longer than I thought it would be. And yeah, I'm so sorry, but the person who read this, she's a celebrity, she's famous. She just didn't do a good job, I'm sorry. The last finished spread that I have is Evergreen Chase, which is the Shady Hollow novella. It takes place during the holidays, like Christmas time, winter solstice, and it was very, very cute. Similar to Cold Clay, there wasn't that much of a, a mystery involved. There were really very few suspects. The mystery was really easy to figure out. It was not like a keep you on the edge of your chair kind of a mystery, and that was disappointing. But aside from that, this was actually one of my most favorite Shady Hollow experiences. And because it just involved the community aspect of the small town so much. There were things that happened that upset the town and the community just came together as one. That kind of thing just gets me like in my heart when communities come together in the midst of adversity, when people all work together for a common good. There was a huge amount of just holiday coziness, home-baked cookies, coffee, decorations that just, even though this was a short novella, even though the mystery wasn't that complicated, it was just one of my most, most favorite Shady Hollow reads. 
despite that, just because of how cozy and how wonderful the story was. It just really just filled my heart up. That's all I have for now. I finished Anne of Green Gables last night. I have to say, I knew I would like it. I did not expect it to just be one of my most favorite books that I've ever read, like top five favorite books that I've ever read. I absolutely love this book. So today I started on this spread. I knew that this one would take two pages. There's a lot that I have to write about. Um, but yeah, and these printables are available in my shop. The butterflies are hippie post, but the books and the cute little ginger girl and the honey are all part of a kind of cottage core new printable that I have in my shop right now. I really, really enjoy the artists that did them. As most of you guys know in my shop, some of it is my own artwork, some of it is the artwork of other artists, and I really like having a combination of both in my shop. These are not my own artwork, they are from another artist, but I just absolutely love them and I'm so excited to offer them. So the next reading journal video will start off with my Anne spread once it's all filled out and I can give you guys my opinion on the book, but just a little spoiler, I loved it. I wish I had read it as a kid. I think it would have made such a beautiful impact on my life if it had been in my life earlier. As Anne says, I feel like a kindred spirit to her. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and I could not recommend this notebook more. I really love the B5 size, especially if you're doing a lot of writing, not just artwork. I really love notebook therapy. I feel like these hardcover, really beautiful, sturdy journals are wonderful to work in. They're just a pleasure to work in. I was able to fully implement a habit into my life that has now stuck, it has taken hold, it is not like a resolution that I wanted to do, did for a little while, and then just stopped. This book, even though I started it in March, I started planning for it back in December. So I started reading in December, I started marking down the days I was reading in December in another journal. I really started implementing this, so it's been three or four months in the making and it has stuck. I have fully incorporated reading back into my life and not only that, but it's fun again. I am having so much fun with it. I am finishing books and it's just been a pleasure. And I hope if I can encourage anybody that even me, somebody with short attention span, lots of things going against her, by choosing a really gentle and easy and personalized way to do this, not trying to be anyone else, not trying to put goals that were too much on me, on myself. I was able to have a reading journal, which is something that I've wanted for a while. I've been able to finish books and I've been able to give my brain that mental workout that I was really hoping to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments if you have any book suggestions. I am really interested in uh, starting to maybe expand my reading list a little bit and also let me know what you think. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.